Hi guys, it's your science teacher with another video here. Uh, this time it's on C6 electrolysis. Uh, sometimes considered quite a tricky topic actually. Uh, however, once you know some of the rules, it becomes a lot easier and it's a, a good way to actually access some of the level seven, level eight material on this course. Let's start the topic of electrolysis off by looking at what electrolysis is um, and how it kind of works. So electrolysis splits up ionic compounds. It will not work, and I repeat, it will not work with covalent compounds. It needs charged ions. Um, and charged ions cannot move uh, if they are in a solid form. So them charged ions need to be able to be free to move. And that can either be in a molten form or in an aqueous form. Uh, that's how your electrolysis first needs to happen. You need to either heat up your ionic compounds or dissolve it in water so them ions are free to move. Once them ions are free to move, we need to separate them. And that's where the electricity comes in. Um, basically what happens is electrolysis is comprised of two electrodes, two key components you have the anode and the cathode. And remembering which way round these are is important. I always remember it by not panicking. And uh, that's a little uh, mnemonic I use to remember it. Positive is anode, negative is cathode. And I like to remember it like that. So my negative electrode uh, is my cathode, and my positive is my anode. And electrolysis works on the principle of opposites are charge, uh, opposite charges attracting one another. When the positive uh, ions hit that cathode, they re become reduced. And uh, to remember whether it's oxidized or reduced, I use the term oil rig. Uh, that's another mnemonic, and that stands for oxidation is uh, loss and uh, reduction is gain. And basically that's because uh, when the positive ions hit the cathode, they become reduced because they gain electrons. When the negative ions hit the anode, they become oxidized as they lose the extra electrons that they've gained when becoming a negative ion. And we're gonna look at examples of this uh, and it will explain it and make it a lot more clear to you in a second. But for now, if you just remember that oxidation always recurs at the anode and reduction always occurs at the cathode, that's a really good start. Before we go on to look at some examples of some electrolysis, um, what we're going to do is we just need to know a couple of rules that go on with electrolysis. Um, so I said there's two ways you can carry out an electrolysis. You can either add it to water and turn it into a solution, or you can uh, make it molten so that the ions can move. But when you add it to a solution, you are adding other ions into the mix. You are adding uh, hydrogen ions, H+, plus, and OH- minus hydroxide ions as well. So there's some uh, rules you need to be able to learn. Um, so as we said, the anode, it attracts negative ions. And if the negative ions are halogen, um, then it will always be formed at the anode. For example, Cl-, minus, F-, minus, Br-, minus. these are all ions that will be formed at the anode. However, if you don't have a negative ion, for example, you have a sulfate or you have a carbonate, um, then you do not form that ion. These will not form. Instead, you'll produce oxygen at the anode. So the only ones that get formed uh, in solution are halogens, okay? That's the only thing that you can form. You can only form chlorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, and even astatine. Um, but you will, not, you will not form that with other negative ions. You'll only make the oxygen that comes from the hydroxide ion, the OH minus, like I said. Now, the negative cathode, uh, this is the one that attracts the metals. This is the one that's probably the most useful product you're going to make out of electrolysis. Um, so if it's less reactive than hydrogen, you will make 
that uh, that element from electrolysis. For example, things like copper, uh, you will make that from electrolysis. Uh, gold, um, you'll also make silver, things like that. Things that aren't very uh, reactive, you will form them at your um, cathode. However, if you look at um, some metals that are more reactive than hydrogen, for example, potassium is a very reactive metal, so sodium, uh, things like that, they will not be formed if you put it in a solution. What will be formed is hydrogen gas, which comes from the H plus ions in solution. So you need to be really careful when looking at uh, ionic compounds that are in solution. We're going to look at some examples now so I can explain what I actually mean. Let's look at an actual example of an electrolysis now. Let's look at lead bromide. Um, and if I draw out the molecular formula of lead bromide, it looks like this. So if I was to add it to a solution, I would be making Pb2 plus ions or and Br minus ions. Um, now, uh, it doesn't matter if I make it molten or in solution, I will always have them two ions present. So now just imagine that I have uh, made my lead bromide molten. I've made it molten now. Uh, so I've got my lead and my bromine ions, bromide, I mean, ions in there. Uh, where are they going to move? Well, my lead is going to move to my cathode. So let's just write molten here to show that this is uh, in molten, not aqueous. My Pb2 plus is going to go to my cathode and at my cathode, it's going to be reduced, okay? And that's going to make lead. And that's what's going on at the cathode. Now, at the anode, uh, I've got my bromide ions, and what's happening to them is uh, they are going to the anode, and they're becoming oxidized, making Br2, and releasing two electrons there. So they're my two products when molten. Let's have a look if it's the same with aqueous. So I said with aqueous, if it is more reactive, so I'm going to introduce, sorry, I'm going to introduce some H plus, I'm going to introduce some OH minus into the mix um, by sh just showing that I've dissolved it in water, basically. Um, so I've introduced them ions. Now I said, if it is more reactive than hydrogen, then um, it will not be produced at the cathode. However, lead isn't very reactive. So lead is still going to be produced at the cathode. So that makes lead. And at the anode, because bromide is a halide ion, that means that that is still going to be produced. If it wasn't a halogen, you'd make oxygen, remember. So let's look what that means. It means that you do this. And... That is what's going on at either the cathode and the anode for aqueous. Let's look at sodium sulfate now. And sodium sulfate has the formula Na2SO4. Uh, that means that I have one plus uh, sodium ions and I have SO4, two minus in the mix. Now let's look what happens if I uh, had molten sodium sulfate. Let's look at that as our first example. When I create molten sodium sulfate, now I have sodium positive ions and I have uh, sulfate negative ions. Um, so look, let's look which way they're going to go. Well, the positive uh, ions, they're going to move this way, aren't they? They're going to move towards my uh, cathode. And at the cathode, what's going to happen is reduction. So my Na plus is going to be reduced. It's going to gain one electron and become sodium. And my sulfate, well, that's going to go towards my uh, anode. And that's going to go from SO4 to minus. You'd actually produce a bit of uh, sulfur dioxide and oxygen. However, if it is an aqueous, we're actually going to get different products. And let's explain that now. When you're aqueous, you introduce uh, two other ions 
into the mix you're introducing h plus and oh minus so let's look at my electrolysis slide so if you remember the rules for what happens uh, when you dissolve it in water um, if your uh, metal is more reactive than hydrogen then hydrogen is produced so let's see what the half equation for that will look like this time i have h plus i'm gonna have two h plus and i'm gonna add two electrons and that's going to go to h2 and at the um, cathode um, what is going to happen i mean at the anode because it's positive sorry positive anode i make mistakes too um, we're going to get the oh minus and that's going to get converted into oxygen now it's quite um, good to remember the half equation for uh, the oxidation of the hydroxide ion that's quite a, a good equation to just remember as it sometimes could pop up in a higher exam paper one metal that is almost purely harvested through electrolysis is aluminium and aluminium doesn't come in its pure sense it doesn't come just uh, as aluminium on its own it's quite reactive so it reacts with oxygen in the air and becomes aluminium oxide um, which has the formula Al2O3. Now, um, it has quite a high melting point and we do make the aluminium oxide molten. Um, and actually, some cryolite is added uh, to lower the melting point of the aluminium oxide. Um, and don't be scared by this um, electrolysis setup. Look, it's a bit different uh, from uh, the electrolysis that we've just seen. However, it's basically the same uh, in the fact that it has the negative uh, over here and it just has the positive over here. So the anodes, it has two of them and it has the cathode down here at the bottom. And it just still works by exactly the same principle. Now, um, the extraction of aluminium oxide now isn't that great for the environment uh, though. And it does have a few setbacks. These carbon electrodes um, well, they react with the oxygen produced because the, uh, obviously the O2 minus is going to be attracted to here. And these carbon uh, electrodes will actually burn away when it produces CO2. So CO2 gets produced at these electrodes and these burn away. So the, the positive anodes constantly need replacing and it's producing CO2 and we know from experience now that CO2 is a greenhouse gas and greenhouse gases are bad for the environment as they can uh, cause global warming through the greenhouse effect and over time uh, if you run this electrolysis for quite a while you'll actually build up a layer of aluminium uh, on the cathode and it's just basically taken out. When you remove the electrodes, uh, you can just scrape away that aluminium that has sunk to the bottom. That's the end of the topic of electrolysis. If you liked the video, please remember to subscribe to my channel uh, where you'll find lots of similar videos to this. I go through the whole of the AQA GCSE science course.